Well, howdy again, it's Mr. Pete. Welcome back to the shop. I'm gonna make a little project today and this will be a two-part video. Just a little correction. This will not be a two-part video. It will be a four-part video. So be sure and watch all four parts. I haven't made a little steam engine in an awful long time. Not that there's a demand for it, but I noticed that quite a few other creators are doing them lately. So I'm gonna make today, in the next two videos, that is, a little wobbler oscillator engine that size it's the smallest that i've ever done i don't know why i'm doing something that small but i think it'll be fun to do it only requires 10 cents worth of material so you can make it too and but you need ten thousand bucks worth of machinery and other things as well but i think this will be fun as it well it's not all that easy it looks easy it looks simple but there's a lot of little techniques there that are really tricky and if you don't follow everything that I'm uh, talking about here, about alignment and squareness and perpendicularity and all that stuff, you will have a problem. But I think that you can make it and it would be a great project for you guys with smaller machines such as Unimats and Surelines and those smaller 9-inch uh, uh, Craftsman, Sears, Atlas, all of those little machines. This, this would be just a wonderful project for you. By the way, I'm filming most of this with my iPhone, so let's see how this goes. Let me know if it's better or worse than my Handycam. I don't know if the voice will be loud enough, but I am wearing a microphone for the first time in my life. Where did the inspiration or the ideas or the dimensions for this engine come from? Well, if you watched a video of mine three or four months ago about an auction that I attended, you will remember that there was a mayonnaise jar, and here it is. It had a lid on it. I lost the lid. But in it, and this came in a tray of tools, and I paid two bucks for the whole thing, I think it was. And there it is. So this has been on the front porch of Funkin' Wagnall since noon today. So I'm basically just copying this verbatim. Maybe just a few little variations in it. But you may also remember that at that same auction... I bought this steam engine, this is a Whedon, and there is a video on that. And by the way, I'm gonna show you a little film, film clip right now from that video, and also the name of the video if you would wanna see that video. And I'll just show you a minute or so where I kind of discover this in the mayonnaise jar and talk a little bit about it. So that's enough talk, let's, let's get going here. Now, I paid about $15 for this box, but it came with another box. And really, this was in the other box along with some worthless stuff, which I left lay at the auction. But I was buying it because of this, and I don't believe anybody saw this. And not that it's that great, but let's open it up and see what's in here. Now, this is homemade. I don't know what, what the tape is for, but this was taped to the top. It's a lid, all sticky, but a tiny little steam engine that that man had made. He had several models there that he made. As I said, he did have a Sheldon lathe. I haven't tried running it yet, but I thought that was kind of exciting because I'm still the only one at the entire auction that spotted this. Again, it was in the middle of the plunder, and there was a lot of stuff there, and most of it was total garbage. But I'm kind of happy with this for some reason. And I'll put it right over here next to the Whedon. Okay, again, the mayonnaise jar engine. And to repeat, I know I just said this, but this is a wobbler. That is, it's also single acting and is sometimes called an oscillating engine. And I did not make this one, but of course, during rehearsal, I made another one. And it works perfectly. Maybe I should run these just a little bit for you right now. Yeah, I guess I will here in a minute. This is about as simple of an engine as you can possibly make. Now, I have many, many videos on making little engines. So there's a playlist for that. And I'll put the playlist either up on the top or down in uh, the uh, area below the directions or whatever they call it. Now, of all the engines I've made over the years, many, many little engines, I sold them all, except for this one. And this is not a wobbler. This is a has a cam. 
But look at how big the, I always thought this was small, but look at how big this looks compared to the mayonnaise engine. Well, what kind of materials do you need for this? Here is one inch brass, that's for the flywheel. Of course, you could use steel if you don't have brass. Do not use aluminum, you need a little weight to it. That's the first part that we'll make here presently. And I'm doing something just a little different here. The prototype, which still has some red on it, otherwise I couldn't tell the prototype from the original. Anyway, this has a magnesium base. And I'm going to use magnesium for the upright and the cylinder as well, but this is steel. You could use steel or aluminum. You won't have magnesium. Matter of fact, this will be the first project in my entire life, I believe, where I use magnesium, the lightweight metal from the sea. If you are using steel, that's 3 8 square. There's four foot of it, but I've already cut off just a little piece here just so you can see. And I have prepared a piece of magnesium. So that's been cut down 3 8 by 3 8 by whatever the length is. Hopefully I don't screw up too many of them. By the way, make two of these at the same time. Make two of everything because I guarantee you're going to have to start over on some things. Well, here's a piece of 5 8 that could be steel or brass and that's for the crank right here. And then we've got some half inch brass or steel for this little collar or bushing. You could use anything for that. Then, okay, the piston and connecting rod is all one piece. That's something I've never done before, but I think you're going to like that. But it's kind of tricky, and I'm using simply quarter inch brass for that. By the way, this has a one fourth inch bore and a three inch stroke. And you could vary that if you want. And what else we got here? All right, there's a piece of 3 16 steel for the main shaft. Here is a piece of eighth inch tubing. This is brass, but you could use copper. And that is the inlet. And by the way, there's the exhaust. This man, who's taking a dirt nap, by the way, is uh, <laughs> used copper. <laughs> It doesn't matter what you use. Make your own out of steel. That's some of that hobby brass is what it is. And then finally, this little skinny piece of 16th inch wire. What did I use that for? I forgot. Oh, that's, that's for the crank pin. And I showed you the wrong steel. That should be 332nd, and then that's filler rod. And then for the base... There is my magnesium, still rough cut. Weighs one third less than aluminum. Did you know that? So that's the material you need. Now this is a piece of magnesium, you know, and it gets this patina on it that's really kind of ugly, you know, it turns gray. But how do you identify magnesium other than it's lightweight? When you first saw it, it'll be extremely shiny. And I doubt that that shows up, but it'll be extremely shiny compared to aluminum. Now, again, I know you're not go going to have uh, magnesium, so just use aluminum or steel, or you could even use wood, whatever you want. Whatever your little heart desires. Are we having fun yet? Okay. I think I got too much air going here. But this is the original. Remember, this man now lives in a coffin. Well, actually, he doesn't live in a coffin. He resides in a coffin. But see how nicely that runs? I don't know what my air pressure is under 10. Now let's see if the other one runs, the prototype. I know this is a steam engine, but I don't have a boiler, so I'm running it on compressed air. And this is the prototype. And I lowered the air pressure. You know, it just runs beautifully. If you follow all of the instructions, and work accurately, yours will work, and it will work the first time. So it's fun. At the very least, it's a paperweight. You know, brass is kind of expensive, so I hope you don't have to buy any. 
but this piece of brass here is one inch brass as you can see and that's what I made these two little flywheels out of but I decided to use this because it's slightly bigger in fact it's what one inch and forty thousandths and of all things I've had this for a long time this is bunting brass you know they make all kinds of bronze bushings and so on and it's marked one inch, even though it's not, because I think they're allowing a little material to clean it up. So this is just going to be so simple. So I'm just going to face it off, drill and ream a 3 16 hole, and put in the tiniest imaginable set screw, which you will suffer with. That's a 440. And let me give you the other dimensions here. And I will turn it down a little bit. That's why I'm starting oversized. Just enough to clean it up. It is not that critical. So we'll turn this little hub down to half inch or thereabouts. And how long is it? Eh, call it an eighth inch. Maybe a little more so you got room to put that tiny little set screw there. And then we'll polish it all up and it'll be just slick as can be. Put just a little chamfer on each side. And... This is what I'm going to use. I like to turn brass, don't you? Here's a little side note, irrelevant. If you have one inch stock, this will not fit into your ad average Atlas Craftsman South Bend lathe unless you have the heavy tin. But this is the, the tail stock or the headstock end of the clausing. And this has the big spindle hole that it will allow one inch or even I think one and three eighths is the diameter. It will fit in here and it also will handle 5C collets. Now, if you do not have the big spindle hole, you will have to cut off a shorter piece of this to chuck up in your smaller lathes. You knew that. Okay, I'm at the closing lathe. Can you tell that I'm wired? I had a big cherry Coke from the Igloo for lunch, 16 ounce, and that caffeine really wires me. Here we go. Okay, let's cut it off to length, and the overall length or thickness, whatever you want to call it, including the hub, is about 9 sixteenths, but you can make it a little heavier if you desire. You know, ever since I sold that little hardened lathe that sat right here on this table, I'm using it as a workbench and I love it. And here's my little Cameron drill press for these tiny holes. You won't have one, but use the smallest drill press that you can. So I'm going to drill a hole here for the set screw. And it's 440 that I'm going to tap. 
which means it's a number 45 drill that I need to put in. And here we go. Now this is a 440 tap. Okay, I've got a bag of 440 set screws. I'm sure you do too, and that'll probably take your smallest Allen wrench that you've ever seen. This brass is so soft, I already got little scratches in it from the chuck and the vise. It's just a very soft material. I may never have told you. Did I give you this dimension already? Could be any dimension you want. One other thing I wanted to say is when you use uh, drill bits and brass, if they're brand new bits, they've never been used on steel, they will cut like crazy. But if you have a drill bit that uh, you use just once or twice to drill steel, it will be a struggle. So if you could have dedicated tools for brass, it would be a big plus, but we don't and how would we ever keep them straight especially in a multi-person type of shop okay i've completed the first part the brass flywheel it looks real good and i've already made the shaft well it's just 3 16 rod cut off to about two inches long i may have to trim it later on but there's really nothing to show there just use 3 16 steel and it's ready to go and I think we've had just about enough fun today I know it went a little bit slow here with the introduction but this concludes part one of a four-part video so I'll see you soon in part two as I forge ahead to build the beautiful little mayonnaise steam engine